Okay, here we are to talk about, just in general, um, to talk about things in physical media again. I wanted to tell you, I ought another another one of those um, player things I told you. And this is what I like to do. I like to tinker around with a lot of older stuff because it's easier to replace some of the speakers. You don't have to have top-notch speakers to hook, hook up to these units. You do need the special plugs for the um, DVD changes and all that. But other than that, you can get a decent speaker or whatever. You don't have to have high-end equipment to run it. And you can experiment with different stuff. That's what I like. I'm not going to be the one that just unboxes brand new stuff all the time. I told you that in another video. I don't like collectors that just buy brand new stuff all the time. Sometimes you have to buy all the stuff. Look behind me. I have DVDs from all different stuff. Look. Yeah, how many people buy Johnny Carson stuff nowadays? Or um, the Avengers or um, e Secret Agent Danger Man or um, um, The Lion King in 3D. That's my that's but in the background of nearly every video I do down here. I love this set. It was an expensive set, but it was well worth buying it. The 3D is pretty phenomenal in The Lion King. I think only the first movie has 3D, I believe. Um... Yeah, I'd actually, I think, yeah, was it either just the first, uh, I can check. Oh, that yeah, stupid beast. And I'm a documentary person, although there hasn't been many good documentaries in the last few years. PBS has some of them. Even the last few Ken Burns ones haven't been that good. If we open up Lion King for a second, I don't want to rip the box. Because this is actually such an expensive set. Oh, wait, we can just look at the back here. All right, I was wrong. There's Lion King, it's Diamond Edition, Blu-ray 3D. Now this is when you stick. This is the shit. This is when you used to get everything. This came with the Blu-ray 3D, the Blu-ray, the DVD, and the digital copy. Four ways of watching the movie. Then the second one was the Blu-ray and the DVD for Lion King one and one, one and one half. That was kind of stupid. Then they had Lion King two with the Blu-ray and 3D. Um, you know, I think they should have just made it simple. Lion King 1, 2, and 3. I, why do they have to call it 1? You know, Disney is, that's where Disney kind of, um, you know, really gets me a little aggravated. Is that they do stupid things like that. And, um, you know, they ruin a lot of things for people in my opinion. But The Lion King is really a good movie and I think people should watch it. Um, you don't have to watch everything in 4K. I can tell you one thing. The picture does look a, a lot better in 4K, especially with um, The Lion King. But the soundtracks. I, as, an, as a person that's listened to different audio, there is slight differences sometimes. But sometimes the old-fashioned version of something sounds better. Even though it's not the best quality to, in technical terms, I can't tell the difference half the time. Like, I just watched The Lion King in Laserdisc tonight on AC3 with Dolby Digital. It sounds exactly like the DVD did, or even the 4K. Of course, they can't punch out the same dynamic audio like a 4K through your system, but it still works with the subwoofer and everything, and, you know, many people will never be able to do a comparison because they don't own a Laserdisc play with a demodulator, but still, it's worth that. Um, worth mentioning that. Um, I, as being a collector with all these um, these systems, I'm able to test out things. So I mentioned that I was getting that big thing. Now, you know, it's funny when you look online on eBay, you see all these different units for sale. And um, I was thinking about just buying the box and not buying. But I thought about it and I said, well, why don't I just get the whole system? There's a, at least a couple of people online that sell it with the speakers. But a lot of the people only sell them with the smaller Sony speakers for the front and the back. And I said, if I'm going to have front speakers, I don't want front speakers that are really small. Those are those are the kind of speakers you put in the rear of your system for like small sound effects and stuff. You don't need them to have a big punch. But the one I got has a speaker, um, the, um, a front speaker that comes about this high off the ground or a little, it comes on a pole. And you stick it to the pole. It's actually pretty nice. I hope the pole comes with the screws though. Because I'm screwed if it doesn't. How would I get it to the speaker to stay on the damn thing? But um, 
other than that, it's really nice. See, I like to experiment with older things, and that's fun. I'll I'll finally be able to use the original sub passive subwoofer for, subwoofer for this thing. It's late, forgive me. And I'll be able to see. A lot of people complained about how much it sucked on the um, Sony DAV FX80. They said the subwoofer was, was pathetic. I read a review on it. Um, it can't be any worse than the subwoofer I have hooked up right now, and that's actually not that bad. But I noticed with this system is that if, um, when you have front speakers right now, like I have, um, I had a front channel speaker that was huge. I took it out and put the smaller one in because it just takes up too much space in my room. Um, I, what I noticed is you have to mess around with the settings on these DVD changes. So what I did was I put everything at zero decibels and I put the subwoofer all the way up. So you can hear the subwoofer over everything else. Because when there's explosions and shit, sometimes the only way you can hear it, if everything is evened out, is if you put it really loud. I want to be able to hear the subwoofer when it's at uh, a lower volume. And I know that's kind of stupid. It, it kind of washes some things out with the sound, but I like listening to it that way. And that's what I did. And I did that a while ago. And now I'm getting around to this um, setup now. I'm going to have to test everything. going to be a big video doing that. could be a couple hours long, actually. I'll set it up and I'll test it in front of everything. I'm going to test the um, all the outputs to make sure they output an S-Video component and um, HDMI and regular composite, actually. Or should I test regular composite? Yeah, I probably should test that. Um, so I'll do that, too. And then I'll... Um, What's it called? I'll, um, what's it? Then I'll test um, the DVD changer. It's not so bad if the DVD changer itself doesn't work as long as the amplifier part works. I don't care if the DVD changer doesn't work, but I'm going to test that just to be sure too. Then I'll test the digital audio coaxial out and then the optical out. And I don't think there's really anything to test after that, but that's what I'm going to check. Um, I'll have, I have a few discs I can sample. I think I'm going to try to use Days of Thunder because I've had a lot of luck with that. I've, I've only been copyrighted once with that movie through the digital YouTube. And I'm only using small fragments, like 30 seconds of a movie. So I don't think that's much of a problem. But a lot of movies, they sometimes make me mute, mute out the audio and all of that. And I don't like doing that. So if I use Days of Thunder for small periods of time, I usually don't have a problem with it because it's a movie that's not very highly regarded. I liked it, but it was like a total ripoff of NASCAR. You know, um, everything was cut off from actual NASCAR races. No one really did anything when it came to racing in the movies. All the clips you saw were from real races. And, you know, that's not totally bad for back then, but today's standards, it would never fly. That's why there's no more race car races. I guess they would, you know, um, even with today's technology, um, it'd be too hard to make it realistic. The last, in fact, the last race movies we re we, we really had were Fast and Furious, Need for Speed, and probably that Gran Turismo movie, which was pretty good, surprisingly, because it was made off of a video game. So, um. You know, that's it. This is just an electronics update. I want to let people know what's going on. So there's a lot to unbox and tons of Blu-ray movies and 4Ks coming in and TV sets. Um, I just want people to know, I always try to do something different. I do a lot more retro stuff now because it's a lot easier to buy those things. I mean, if I was to get a new 4K thing every day, it wouldn't be any fun. I would have to shorten out everything. You'd be lucky if every few months I would unbox something if all I did was 4K movies. But if you do retro movies, you can buy a lot more stuff. And I don't buy necessarily things I hate. Sometimes I blind buy a little just to have a movie to watch one night. But most of the time, I at least make sure I like the movie. I read it and see what it's about. And um, I also look a lot and see if it's um, on Blu-ray sometimes, if it's important. But I don't watch everything in 4K. I always try to watch it on um, another format. Like, for instance... I'm trying to look over here. I'm trying to think of a movie. Some movies like um, the movie Paycheck with Ben Affleck. Um, that movie, I believe, is in, only on Blu-ray. might have been, been released on 4K or whatever. But um, 
I like that movie a lot, but you know, I've watched it on DVD. I've watched it. You can, you can get away with watching Paycheck on DVD, and that's fine. So, um, that's all I'm going to mention. So, for people, there's going to be big updates. Nothing with candles. Candles is going to be on a hold for a long time. I bought all the Halloween candles, the c Halloween collection, the fall candles. I bought the cafe collection. So, Yankee Candle is going to be shut down for a while. But there's going to be a ton of movie stuff happening over the next couple of months. Well, um, every, there'll at least be a three or four new unboxings every month. Uh, because there's all new stuff coming out. Um, it's not going to be slow. I, I started this channel because I wanted to show people the, all the unboxings. All the different unboxings and stuff. I really wish I could do more police scanner stuff for you. But there's literally nothing to unbox that's new for police scanners. And all the old stuff is really expensive. And I'm not very good with police scanners programming them and stuff. So that's why I only had one for the last five or six years. And everything, the last one I bought was it a few months ago. I bought the and a handheld. It was a piece of crap. And I ended up sending it back. Um, I'm surprised. You know, Amazon's pretty good. You can really, really wreck the box. And they'll still take the return. But you should always take care of it as much as you can. But some of these boxes are flimsy. Um, all you have to do is touch it and there's all dents in it and all that. You know, um, police scanners, I don't think there's going to be much for me to do in the future when it comes to unboxings. I used to do a police scanner video every day, but I got sick of doing it. It was too much work to put together. I don't have an official computer I can use. I won't use a computer I stream off of because if I have any problems with that computer, there goes the stream. And although I said it's not a big deal, I dedicated a computer to it and I set everything up. Until that computer breaks, I told you, that's the end of it. Alright, well that's it. Bye-bye.